good day. It's day 40. Um, now have approximately uh, 325 more days to go. Um, today we're reading, uh, well, today is February 9th, 2015. We're reading Leviticus 6 and 7, Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 30, King James Version. Leviticus 6, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul sin and commit a trespass against the Lord, and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep or in fellowship or in a thing taken away by violence or has deceived his neighbor or have found that which was lost and lied concerning it and swear it falsely in any of these that a man doeth sin it therein then it shall be because he had sinned and is guilty that he shall restore that which he took violently away or the thing which he had deceitfully got or that which was delivered him to keep or the lost thing which he found or all that about which he had sworn falsely he should even restore it in the principle and should add the fifth part more thereto and give it unto him to whom it appertained in the day of, the tr of his trespass offering and he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord a ram without blemish out of the flock with thy estimation for your trespass offering unto the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord, and it shall be forgiven him for anything of all that he had done in trespassing therein. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his son, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is the burnt offering because of the burn, burning upon the altar all night until the morning and the fire of the altar should be burning on him. And the priest shall put on his linen garment, and his linen breeches should be put upon his flesh, and take upon the ashes which the fire hath consumed with the burnt offering on the altar, and he shall put them beside the altar. And he shall put off his garments, and put on other garments, and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it, it shall not be put out, and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. Later burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. And this is the law of the meat offering. The sons of Aaron shall offer it before the Lord, before the altar. And he shall take of it his handful of the flour of the meat offering and of the oil thereof, and all the frankincense which is upon the meat offering, and shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savour, even the memorial of it unto the Lord. And the remainder thereof shall Aaron and his sons eat with unleavened bread, shall it be eaten in the holy place, in the court of the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall eat it. It shall not be taken with leaven, I have given it unto them, for the portion of my offering made by fire, it is most holy, and is the sin offering, and is the trespass offering. All the males among the children of Aaron should eat of it. It should be a statute forever in your generation concerning the offering of the Lord made by fire. Everyone that toucheth them should be holy. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This is the offering of Aaron and of his sons which they shall offer unto the Lord in the day when he is anointed, the tenth part of an epath of flour for a meat offering perpetual, half of it in the morning and half thereof at night. In a pan it should be made with oil, and when it is breaking, bacon, thou shalt bring it in, and the bacon pieces of the meat offer shall thou offer for a sweet savour unto the Lord. And the priest of his sons that is anointed in his stead shall offer it. It is a statue forever unto the Lord. It shall be wholly burnt. For every meat offering for the priest shall be wholly burnt. It shall not be eaten. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, should the sin offering be killed before the Lord, it is most holy. The priest that offer it for sin should eat it in the holy place, shall it be eaten in the court of the tabernacle of the congregation. 
whosoever should touch the flesh thereof should be holy. And when there is sprinkling, sprinkled of the blood thereof upon any garment, thou shalt wash that whereon it was sprinkled in the holy place. But the earthen vessel wherein it is sodden should be broken. And if it be sodden in a brazen pot, it should be both scoured and rinsed in water. All the males among the priests should eat thereof. It is most holy, and no sin offering whereof any of the blood is brought into the tabernacle of the congregation to reconcile with all in the holy place should be eaten. It should be burnt in the fire. Chapter 7. Likewise is the law of the trespass offering. It is most holy. In the place where they kill the burnt offering should they kill the trespass offering. And the blood thereof should be sprinkled round about upon the altar. And he shall offer up it all the fat thereof, the rump and the fat that covereth the inwards. And the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks, and the caul that is above the liver with the kidneys, it shall be taken away. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar for an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a trespass offering. Every male among the priests should eat thereof. It should be eaten in the holy place. It is most holy. As the sin offering is, so is the trespass offering. There is one law for them, the priest that make an atonement therewith shall leave have it. And the priest that offer any man's burnt offering, even the priest shall have to himself the skin of the burnt offering which he hath offered. And all the meat offering that is bacon in the oven, and all that is dressed in the frying pan, and in the pan should be the priest that offereth it. And every meat offering mingled with oil and dry shall all the sons of Aaron have, one as much as another. And this is the law of the sacrifice, a peace offering, which he shall offer unto the Lord. If he offer it for thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cakes mingled with oil, and unleavened wafers anointed with oil, and cakes mingled with oil, a flour fried. Besides the cakes, he shall offer for his offering leavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of his peace offerings. And of it, he shall offer one out of the whole oblation for an heave offering unto the Lord, and it shall be the priest that sprinkleth the blood of the peace offering. And the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offering of thanksgiving shall be eaten the same day that it is offered. He shall not leave any of it until the morning. But if the sacrifice of his offering be a vow or a voluntary offering, it should be eaten the same day that he offered his sacrifice. And on the morrow, also the remainder of it should be eaten. But the remainder of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day should be burnt with fire. And if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offering be eaten at all the third day, it should not be accepted. Neither should it be imputed unto him that offered it. It should be an abomination, and the soul that eateth of it should bear his iniquity. And the flesh that touches any unclean thing should not be eaten. It should be burnt with fire, and as a flesh, and as for the flesh, all that be clean shall eat thereof. But the soul that eateth of the flesh of the sacrifice and peace offering that pertain unto the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, even that soul should be cut off from his people. Moreover, the soul that should touch any unclean thing, as the uncleanness of man, or any unclean beast, or any abomination, abominable unclean thing, and eat of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offering, which pertain unto the Lord, even that soul should be cut off from his people. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Ye should eat no manner of fat of ox, or of sheep, or of goat. And the fat of the beast that dieth of itself, and the fat of the of that which is torn with beast may be used in any other use, but ye shall in no wise eat of it. For whosoever eateth the fat of the beast, of which men offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, even the soul that eateth it should be cut off from his people. Moreover, ye should eat no manner of blood, whether it be a fowl or a beast, in any of your dwellings. Whatsoever soul it be that eateth any manner of blood, even that soul should be cut off from his people. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, He that offereth the sacrifice of his peace offering unto the Lord, 
should bring his oblation unto the Lord of the sacrifice of his peace offering. His own hands shall bring the offerings of the Lord made by fire, that the fat with the beat breast it should he bring, that the breast may be waved for a wave offering before the Lord. And the priest shall burn the fat upon the altar, but the breast shall be Aaron's and his son. And the right shoulder shall be given unto the priest for an heave offering of the sacrifices of your peace offerings. He among the sons of Aaron that offered the blood of the peace offering and the fat shall have the right shoulder for his part. For the wave breast and the heave shoulder have I taken of the children of Israel from off the sacrifice of their peace offerings and have given them unto Aaron the priest and unto his sons by statute forever from among the children of Israel. This is the portion of the anointing of Aaron and of the anointing of his sons out of the offering of the Lord made by fire. In the day when he presented them to minister unto the Lord in the priest's office, which the Lord commanded to be given them of the children of Israel in the day that he anointed them by statute forever throughout their generations. This is the law of the burnt offering, of the meat offering, and of the sin offering, and of the trespass offering, and of the con consecrations, and of the sacrifice of the peace offerings, which the Lord commanded Moses in Mount Sinai in the day that he commanded the children of Israel to offer their oblations unto the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. Matthew 25, verses 1 through 30. Then should the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at night there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they and that were ready went, into, went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is as man travailing into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants coming and reckoned it with him. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, Thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou to the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping what thou hast sown, not sown, and gathering what thou hast not strong, strong. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, thou hast, that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and sold for servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not straw. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received my own usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him that had ten talents. For every one that had should be given, and he should have abundance. But from him that had not should be taken away even that which he had. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. 
there should be weeping and gnashing of teeth.